guys and welcome to another vlog. I've been trying to do one reading vlog a month so far in 2021 and usually I have some sort of theme going on for them because those are the kind of vlogs that I like the best. And my theme for this month in April is a NetGalley Arc catch-up vlog. I got a little bit behind on NetGalley Arcs back in like... Presley's messing with my books. Back in like December, going into the holidays, and I've been slowly trying to catch back up. I didn't actually have that many, but the holidays were really crazy, and January was really crazy with videos. And so, I've been trying to be better, and I've been dropping the ball. I don't know if anybody else can relate to this, but I definitely feel like if I can't do something to the best of my abilities, it gets put on the back burner and I forget about it and I feel horrible about doing that. So basically what I have going on is I have a book from February, I have two books from March, and then I have one more book for April and some stuff going on in May. So basically I think what I'm going to be doing is starting from February and going through and just trying to read as many arcs as I can this week as possible. That way I can also get my reviews up and get the ball rolling on that. I do want to say my percentage on NetGalley is not horrible. I'm currently at 71% but because I'm also on a semi-book buying ban this year, I uh, had to steal a pen from Presley, I definitely have found myself going onto NetGalley every so often and requesting things that I am super excited about coming out, but I don't know if I'm necessarily going to buy because I haven't tried them, they're new authors, that kind of thing. And so I definitely do want to read them. None of these books that I have as ARCs are ones that I'm iffy about. Like, I definitely want to read them, but I haven't yet. So yeah, it is Monday morning. It is nice and not necessarily early. It's like 10 o'clock right now, but we got up at like six something, almost seven. And no, that's mama's coffee. Okay, let me put the baby back over there. We're gonna be starting with my first book which is What Big Teeth by Rose Sabo. The reason I did not read this one in February is I actually didn't get approved for it until like the week it was coming out. And by then I just didn't think I was going to be able to push myself and read it right then and there. And then I just put it on the back burner. So I definitely need to do it. I don't like it when I get approved for things so close to the release date because I feel like I plan my readings out, pen, <laughs> a couple months in advance. So yes, I definitely need to do it. That's gonna be our first priority read. I am also doing buddy reads in the month of April. I just finished one, so I'm happy about that so I can go into this with not as many books that I need to do. But I am reading To Sleep in a Sea of Stars with Stevie. I will leave her channel linked down below. She's mostly gaming stuff actually mostly on Twitch, but we have a good time reading it so far and talking about the different parts, although truth be told I'm not too sure about the book yet, but I have to finish part three by Wednesday sometime, so I will also be reading that as well. Yeah, okay, Presley is getting into everything. I will see you guys when I have another update. <laughs> Okay, it is 12 o'clock, we are just about to have lunch, and I have finished 19% or about 74 pages in What Big Teeth. It is very weird so far, I don't know what's going on, and I feel like that's partially what is supposed to be happening. I do remember, I think, feeling like somebody said that this was very reminiscent of, like, Dark Shadows, which, the movie and the TV show, and so, like, that kind of weird family creature sort of vibes is definitely what I'm getting at. So far, we don't know much, like I've said before, but we're getting a little bit more descriptions of Eleanor's family members more than her, so I don't even know necessarily what she looks like, but she is supposed to be different than her family. Something has happened and she had been sent to boarding school um, and then I think she mentioned that she's running back from boarding school so this is like her first time back in her family house with her family members in like eight years. So even with that I don't know exactly how old she's supposed to be. I want to say probably still in high school somewhere um, but it's been eight years since she's been back home and 
I am very intrigued, but at the same time, I'm very, very confused. But like I said, we are gonna be having lunch soon, so I will read more later today and hopefully have more to tell you. Are you putting things on the puppy's head? Okay, so I've just finished dinner, it's just past seven, but one thing I wanted to show you guys today, and I just haven't really found time to come into the office and show you, was my feedback ratio. I wanted to sort of have a proof on this camera so that when I'm going through the video, we can sort of see my before ratio and my after ratio, just to sort of see if my number is going up because that's my main like goal of NetGalley is to make sure I'm reading the books and giving feedback. And I know they say that the suggested feedback ratio is 80 and I told you I was at 71 and I was. <laughs> However, I got approved for an arc of a manga like right after I talked to you guys. So, as you can see here, I have one on my shelf. I have not downloaded that yet. But, as you can see, my feedback ratio here is 70%. It was at 71, but then I got that manga, so that's why that happened. But yeah, I just wanted some proof on here to sort of do a, like a before and after, I guess. And so yeah, I have read more actually of What Big Teeth, but my phone is not here with me because I'm reading it on the Kindle app because I had downloaded it that way. Um, but the last time I talked to you guys, I was at like 19% and I'm currently at least at 26 or 27. I don't fully remember the actual number, but I'm still so confused. I have no idea what's going on and I'm hoping that we're gonna get answers. If we don't start to get a little bit of something soon, I don't know how I'm going to feel about that because I'm getting to the point where I have definitely read at least 100 pages of this book because it's almost a 400 page book and I've passed the quarter mark um, and I don't understand anything. I don't know what's going on. It's not horribly written. It's just very vaguely written. Our main character has sort of forgotten some stuff that has happened when she used to live with this family and so I think we're supposed to be piecing it together while she's piecing it together but I also can't tell if she's hiding stuff from us or not and I'm just very very confused. So yeah I don't actually know if I will be reading more tonight for that because of the fact that I mentioned before, I am doing a buddy read of To Sleep in a Sea of Stars and I need to get some reading done for that. I have to read like almost 200 pages by the end of Wednesday and I'm slacking a little on that and then I wanted to do this vlog so I need to prioritize when I'm reading stuff. So I think that's where I'm going to end this today. Hopefully I will talk to you guys when I've read more in What Big Teeth tomorrow. Um, I just don't think it'll necessarily be tonight. Good morning and happy Tuesday. I did not get any reading done last night. My full intention was going up there and after Presley went to sleep, reading at least to sleep in a sea of stars. Um, I fell asleep cuddling Presley. Uh, he sleeps in bed with us right in between me and my husband and he likes to cuddle so I have to usually cuddle him in order for him to settle down enough to go to sleep and I apparently was so tired I fell asleep too. I knew I was sort of tired yesterday. Got a cat tail hanging around here. Go away please. But I didn't realize I was that tired like I did not expect to fall asleep before nine o'clock with Presley. So that's what happened. It is past eight o'clock now. It's like 8.22 because Presley actually slept in a little bit as well. He was a little cranky last night, complained a little bit during cat, during the night. Cat. So it is breakfast time. We're gonna be doing that. I'm gonna be making coffee. He wants all of the water cups right now, which is why you can hear him in the background. He wants my husband's water cup, which doesn't even really have water in it. Um, but yeah, so one of my big goals today is going to have to be reading most of <laughs> To Sleep in a Sea of Stars. I have not started that yet, and I need to be like 200, almost 300 more pages into what I'm reading by the end of the day tomorrow. Um, I'm slacking on that a little bit. I think I mentioned a little bit before that I wasn't too sure how I felt about it, and based on the fact that I'm doing this buddy read, slightly differently. We're not talking every chapter because the chapters are set up a little bit weird. We're talking every like part or two. Um, I am slacking a bit. So 
that is a big thing that needs to happen even though I do still sort of want to read what big teeth I'm just still so so confused I know I mentioned yesterday I got to like 26 or 27 percent I think it was I actually got up to 30 percent so I'm like a hundred and something pages in and yeah I have no idea what is actually going on like big picture wise so we shall see um but yeah we're gonna be making breakfast good job hey presley who's the baby baby good job hello everyone it is actually like 3 30 on a wednesday i have not read any more of what big teeth mostly because i was reading to sleep in a sea of stars yesterday and this morning because i really needed to get that done stevie and i for this buddy read are definitely on the same page which is not necessarily a good thing with this book we have found some stuff that we really just are not connecting with and so it is making it harder to read i'm definitely putting it off more than i should but also thank you for my phone um Leon and I went and got our second COVID vaccine this afternoon. We actually just got home like 45 minutes ago. So I will keep you guys updated on how that is, but I'm very excited that we got that done. Um, but yeah, so that ate up some time. Weren't allowed to really have phones and cameras and that kind of stuff in there, which obviously makes sense because of the fact that like HIPAA violations, you can't really be showing other patients things, that kind of stuff. But I'm very glad that we got that. I got mine in my left arm, so um, nothing has gone on with that so far. A lot of my friends and family that have had both doses and if they've had any symptoms have basically had them like 9 to 12 hours after the shot. That's when they first started noticing them and then they lasted for like 24 to 48 hours. Last time I got the shot, I did have some arm soreness, like standard arm soreness, like if you were getting a tetanus shot as well. So I'm expecting myself to have a little bit more than that. My husband basically didn't feel anything last time, so we shall see. But we just got that done um, close to 2 p.m. And so, yeah, that's what I've been doing so far. Presley is crawling all over me right now. And I'm hoping to read more because I want to also get what big teeth done because I'm not fully enjoying that one either. Um, so I can move into a different arc that I need to read. So I think what we're going to do is try to get some reading done now. I do have dinner in the crock pot because we did figure if our arms get a little bit sore, we want to have the next few days be really easy. And so I started the crock pot before we left and we will do that for dinner. It's Indian butter chicken. I'll leave the recipe down below because it is amazing. We're going to do it with like fresh broccoli and some naan bread. Ah, I'm very, very excited for that. But yeah, I should probably stop talking to the camera so I can pick up my phone and read. Are you eating chicken? No, you can't touch it with those hands. Hey, Presley. Make a face. Good morning and happy Thursday. I am pleased to say that my husband and I don't seem to have any symptoms with the second shot, which is great. He did say that he had a little bit more arm soreness than last time, and I have less this time than last time, but it seems like that's really all we've had so far. I will keep you guys updated, but besides that, I wasn't too sure what my symptoms were going to be going to bed last night, so I really wanted to have a book done by now. It's Thursday morning, but I'm not really into what big teeth. If it wasn't an arc, I would probably DNF it. And I have DNF'd arcs before, but like only for like really, really bad ones because I feel bad doing that. But because I didn't know what my symptoms were going to be last night, I didn't really want to read that one because it's just feeling like it's taking forever. I should have picked another arc to do. I didn't. I ended up reading manga. Two volumes of manga. I'm reading um, Ao Haru Ride by Ichigo Takano right now because we were also 
in the 30 volumes in 30 days manga challenge. So this vlog, while I am reading quite a bit, I'm not like reading the books that I set out to read in this like theme. Uh, I'm feeling like I'm failing at the themed vlog, even though I do still have like Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Like we're not even a full halfway through the week yet. And yet I feel like I should have accomplished more than I have. I am gonna be eating breakfast. I just made some croissants with cheese in them. I just made coffee. Um, so I'm gonna eat and then hopefully I can finish What Big Teeth. My Bookly app is stating that it should only take me like an hour and a half to finish the rest of it. And I wanna get that done today, no matter what, because I'm, I'm over this book. Okay, it is almost 12. We are gonna be having lunch soon and I just finished What Big Teeth. I have no words and not in a good way. Like, I think I'm gonna have to give it two stars because like, I really should have DNF'd it except for, for this vlog. Like literally, I don't like DNFing arcs, but I have done it before and it just got more and more convoluted. Like I didn't understand most of what was happening. We sort of got some answers, but even those were crazier than I ever could have imagined. Like, it was not doing it for me. Like, I didn't feel like I got any closure for it. It definitely left sort of open-ended, but the answers we did get were really, really weird. It also had a sort of age gap romance thing. Like, it wasn't a full romance, but there was definitely, like, some feelings between somebody who is still a child... I think they're a teenager of some sort. I don't have actual ages for her. Um, but then, and a guy um, who is obviously an adult, much, much older, and it was very uncomfortable. Also, I don't know what time period this book is set in. I thought it was closer to modern day, but then we have times set really far in the past and like some people because these are like creatures and monsters some people are older and have a longer lifespan but not all of them and i can't fully tell when this is set and i think because of all of these like open-ended like this is just stuff being thrown at me i did not enjoy my reading time there was just too much that i needed more concrete answers for so even though the cover is gorgeous I did not like it whatsoever. I literally had to make myself finish reading it and that was for this vlog. So yeah, like two stars. I, mm, we're gonna have lunch. I might read a manga in the meantime and then I will see you guys again when I pick another book. Okay, so it is just past 3 p.m. Presley is awake and a little bit cranky. Um, I have officially read two more manga because I was sort of doing that during nap time and I'm still not having like any symptoms with this second shot, which is amazing for me because I just assumed because I had some arm pain with the first one that I was going to feel worse with the second one since that seems to be most people's experience, but I'm doing good. I do think it is now time to move on to the next net galley arc that I have. And the one that came out the next like latest, the one that I'm like the most late on after <laughs> What Big Teeth is Down Comes the Night by Allison Saft. This is some sort of YA gothic mystery thriller maybe. I don't actually know about the mystery thriller part, but it's supposed to be sort of gothic. I'm very excited for it. It definitely has higher ratings than What Big Teeth as well. That was a low three point something on Goodreads, whereas Down Comes the Night is a 3.87, which I'm hoping will be a little bit better. Um, I do believe this is also some sort of fantasy as well. I loved the cover, which is the reason why I had to request this. And so, um, yeah, I'm excited to try this out because I need something different than what, what Big Teeth was. Um, Presley, how are we doing? Doing good? Maybe? Okay, we're gonna read. Okay, so it is about 7.15. We're gonna be taking Presley to go upstairs to go to bed soon, do bath time, all that kind of stuff. And I did just wanna update that I am 15% into Down Comes the Night. Um, I don't know too much about it so far, but it does follow our main character of Ren, who is a healer. It does appear that this is going to be fantasy-based in some part. <laughs> Presley's so loud. Uh-huh. 
very loud tonight um, because she has like a healing magic thing and she is part of the like military of one of the countries in this world I do believe we've only really seen one country so far uh, and they're not necessarily in a war with any other country yet but some of their soldiers have gone missing and she while they're out trying to figure out exactly what's going on um, uses her healing magic on like the enemy um, which means that he escapes bad stuff happens because of that and she gets suspended and then while she is suspended she has now received an invitation to go to a different neighboring country because um, some like really rich sort of famous guy has like his servant or something is sick and so he's asking for her like healing powers and that's all we're at so far so basically we're just sort of like getting into the actual like magic and world stuff I'm loving the like actual writing style and voice of our main character so far nothing has been a little bit <laughs> thank you yeah okay Nothing has been overall too weird or anything, so I am planning on reading more tonight just to sort of get into it, um, because I feel like in order to get a full sense of what's going on, I need to read more. But otherwise, so far so good. Good morning. So normally, Presley goes out on a walk with Leon every morning to, you know, get out and do stuff, and... We're going out on a walk today because we actually have some like air conditioner people coming over to do the insulation in the house and Leon is going to like get stuff ready for that so we weren't actually planning on going for a walk especially since Presley and I will be going out of the house later today. I will show you guys that when we go there but <laughs> he was adamant. He wanted to go in his stroller to just go on a walk. So I think we're gonna go check the mail, even though I'm pretty sure Leon and Presley do this like every day anyway, so there's probably nothing in there, but it gives us a destination to go. So yeah, that's what we're doing. Okay, we are now back home and I actually do have two packages here. It is a little loud out there because we have a school like right behind us and I'm sure we have buses and trucks and stuff. But one of them is going to be art. This is from Aubrey Joy that I follow on Instagram and I finally got to purchase something from their like little shop pop-ups because they don't have a bunch of stuff at once on there. And the other one says it's from Macmillan which means it's probably some sort of like pre-order incentive thing that I signed up for with a pre-order. So let's take a look. Okay, the first one, like I said, is from Aubrey Joy. It is a print of a sleeping red panda. I absolutely love their art. It is super cute and adorable, and I think they use like paint pens, like Posca pens, and I think there's another uh, brand as well, but they are so, so freaking cute. So I'm super, super excited to have this one. There have been other ones that I've wanted to get in the past because they do like cats and stuff too, um, but if I can get them, I will. It's just they do like small limited edition batches with each shop update, and like sometimes they're the same ones each time, and then sometimes it skips, and I don't know, but I'm super excited for that one. The other one, let's get to that. <laughs> and so this one I was right as well. It's a pre-order incentive for Lost in the Neverwoods by Aiden Thomas, which I had to pre-order. My husband is texting me. I had to pre-order because I loved Cemetery Boys just like that much. It was my favorite book of last year. And so we have three prints. So let me show you here. We have this one, which then on the back is this. We have this one, which on the back is that and we have this one can you see it there we go which on the back is this they are gorgeous and then not only that we have a pin as well it is actually very shiny it's hard to hold when I'm also holding the camera sorry for vlog style stuff but can we see let me all go here it just says lost in the neverwoods with a very gorgeous like scene down there and it's very, very shiny on like the top of the acorn because it's like an acorn with the scene and the title. It's just, it's gorgeous. I absolutely love this. I love enamel pins anyway, but I love this so, so much. Okay, I gotta take care of Presley. <laughs> from the bookstore. 
door. Hi, baby. You want to see? <gasps> yeah, hi. Silly boy. So one of his books he was reading is The Pout Pout Fish. We got it in a board book. It just looked sort of cute. It was not what we went for, but I decided we had to get him one of those. This one is another book that we didn't go to get necessarily, but I have the same um, series. I think it's the same author and illustrator. It's called I Love Me, which I absolutely love. It's about like the different body parts of the kids, like hair and eyes and brain and knees and elbows and like loving themselves. And this is I Believe in Me. Um, and so I can stand, clap my hands, I can zoom around the room. And it's just like really cute kiddos in here. I personally love that they have so much diversity in all the kids. Like there are so many different kids. And so I had to get this one. But these are the books that I went to go get. These are both by Tom Percival. I actually went last week to the bookstore and I found two other Tom Percival books. I actually found uh, one of them is this one here, Ruby Finds a Worry. And then there was also Misha Makes Friends. And I bought those for Presley because even though they're girls as the main character, I don't think that should matter. He's going to love books no matter who the main characters are. Um, but I did find it interesting that both of the boys' books were completely sold out and I had to order them, whereas the girls' books were in stock. But those are absolutely adorable. And so because of that, I had to get these. So I ordered these the last time I was at Barnes & Noble to come into the store and they came in. I got the email last night, so that's why we went. But so we have Robbie's Roar. It says, what happens when Robbie can't control his temper? And I have not read these ones yet. And then we also have perfectly Norman. I don't really know what they are about. I'm assuming Ravi's is about anger management potentially because like Ruby um, finds a worry is about worry and anxiousness and Misha makes friends is about a kid who doesn't really find it easy to make friends at first and then eventually does obviously. So we have perfectly Norman. It says Norman had always been normal, perfectly normal until one day he grew a pair of wings. Interesting, I absolutely love the art style in here, so that's the reason I had to do that. Um, and then here we have Robbie's Roar. Robbie was the youngest and the smallest in his family. Everyone was bigger than him. Most of the time, being the smallest was great. But sometimes, just sometimes, it wasn't. I feel like both of these ones, again, I could be wrong, but I feel like both of these ones have a little bit more fantasy, magical realism potentially in them, because it looks like he's sort of turning into a tiger and he has wings. Whereas Ruby has a worry that like she can see, but I feel like it's more a metaphor, so maybe these will be metaphors as well. Um, but then Misha Makes Friends didn't have any sort of magic in them whatsoever. It was really just about Misha being very insecure and anxious about making friends. And I really did love both of those. And I'm very excited to have these because uh, they're adorable. I had to get those. And then because we went to the bookstore, I couldn't pass up something for myself and I did still have one book spot left for April. I'm only allowed to buy a certain number of books each month because I'm trying not to increase my TBR. My main goal of 2021 is to lower my TBR. And so the book that I bought for myself is Love Sickness by Junji Ito. This is the newest Junji Ito, just came out Tuesday, and I'm very, very excited. I am missing a couple Junji Ito in English, but in general, I do try to get all of them because I absolutely love him and his manga. They are horror manga, and I'm just very excited. I'm also doing the 30 and 30 manga volume challenge, which this is not on my list for that but I might try and fit it in anyway. We shall see. Um, it's 11 something. We have not had, what's the matter baby? You got up there, he got up there all by himself. We have not had the people come and do installation stuff yet. So that actually might be happening closer to lunch or nap time, which means I might end up moving the pack and play for Presley from the front room to the living room because usually we keep him in there in case I'm doing stuff out here, like filming or that kind of thing, giving a little bit of a buffer in between the rooms. But I'm not planning on a Saturday video going up because I just wasn't planning on it with the shot just in case. I've been feeling perfectly fine, but 
I do think we can move the pack and play into the living room and we can just sort of hang out in there while the air conditioning people do their thing. So yeah, I think that's it for now. Oh, I never talked about down comes the night. I should probably do that. But also, yeah, hi. Oh, thank you for kissing the camera. Hi, Mr. Me, did you find the bag? But yes, down comes the night. I actually got to 32% was it last night? 32% and I'm liking it so far. There have been a little bit of questions where I'm just like, I want a little bit more information and hopefully we will get there. Um, and I did read a little bit more this morning and I'm still feeling the same way. I want a little bit more information. But one thing that I do find interesting is that we have the healing magic. Like that's our main like fantasy aspect in this world so far. But it looks like we also do have like some science going on as well. Like our main character has been talking about a sciencey side. Some of the words do sound scientific and technical. Other ones don't. And I don't fully know the breakdown of like how well researched this is. I used to be a medical assistant and I do know some of the medical stuff. However, I also feel like it's a fantasy world. It would be a little bit weird if we did have a whole bunch of our terms for science stuff in this world. So I'm trying to suspend my disbelief on that. I'm trying not to like use my Kindle app to look up the words to see if they're real things or not. But I do believe this could possibly bug people if it's not fully rooted in our reality and only partially rooted. I don't know, but it is an interesting concept to see in there. He is getting a little bit fussy, so I'm gonna let you guys go. Okay, everyone, it is just about six o'clock. We're gonna have dinner soon, and so I figured it was a good time to like stop and update where I am in Down Comes the Night. Uh-oh. <laughs> so I am 72, 62, 62% of the way through. I don't even know anymore. And I'm liking it okay. There are certain elements that I'm just not quite sure about. I know I mentioned earlier that they have some more like technical jargon going on and they do have some stuff that is rooted in our reality. Like they definitely talked about like thrombosis. So like a blood clot, that kind of stuff. So like they have things that are definitely from our world. However, I also feel like there are some things that are not from our world and I'm not too sure how I'm feeling about that now that we have proof that they have like terminology from here. Um, but also, I forgot for most of this book that our main character is supposed to be in her teens. And one of the other characters, the guy, like, sort of main side character that she is going to this, like, house for is 19 years old. They are written so much older than that. Like, I completely forgot that they were that young. I'm definitely thinking they were like in their 20s like early 20s maybe but like in their 20s um so that is a little bit jarring when they like mention it again and i'm like oh my gosh he is 19. um and i do feel like this is something that is prevalent in young adults not necessarily that they're written too old but that sometimes there are characters that the authors mean to be a little bit older and they have to age it down and i just don't think it quite worked as well in what i'm currently reading also this is very gothic and I'm loving a lot of it, but there is romance in this that I don't believe. And it's mostly because it starts to come about because Ren is treating this guy as a patient. And she's seeing him being very vulnerable because he is sick. And there is this sort of connection between them because of this magic system going on. But I don't see them actually having feelings because of their personalities or who they are as people. I think they're trying to get there a little bit more now, but the actual connection that Ren was like, oh, I am starting to feel stuff, is not because of anything that this other person is. It's just because they were sick. And I don't like the fact that like this potential relationship is coming up because of circumstances instead of people. That is just something that is bugging me a little bit. Also, just so you guys know, I am currently now listening to the audiobook on Scribd. I wasn't for most of my reading. I want to say I didn't start actually listening to the audiobook until past 50% of the way. But 
I don't know if it's me or exactly what it is, but I have noticed this thing lately where sometimes if I'm reading too long on my Kindle app on my phone, my eyes start to like not focus as well on the words. So I don't know if it's my eyes or the glasses or what it is. I actually upped the font size on the Kindle app because I used to have it not necessarily too small, but like small enough that it felt very similar to pages in a book. Um, but so I have upped the font size, but I decided just because I was having a little bit of trouble with that kind of thing, I was going to see if we had an audiobook. And What Big Teeth did not have an audiobook, otherwise I probably would have done that, but Down Comes the Night did have an audiobook. And I am listening to it on two times speed, so that is the quickest that Scribd can do. And I'm following along in my Kindle app on the book. But I will say right now, the narrator for it, at least on two times speed, is really, really good. Let me actually pull up who it is because I don't remember who they are. But I'm actually really, really enjoying the audiobook narration for it. Yes. She's actually doing, the narrator is actually doing different accents for each like character. So like the ones for sure that I've seen is our main character of Ren has one accent. They're all sort of British, Scottish, Irish accents. From my understanding, I could be wrong, but Ren has one accent, the guy has one accent, the maid in the house has another accent. Like, they are so distinct, and I'm absolutely loving it. They sound so great, and in the book, like, when I'm just reading it, there are no, like, accents specified, and, like, my brain would not have done that by itself, because I just don't do that very well with accents, but I'm absolutely loving it. So it says that the narrator is... Saskia Marlevald. I'm probably mispronouncing that so bad and I didn't listen to the beginning when they introduced them because I'm pretty sure in these audiobooks they usually introduce who the narrator is at the very beginning but like I said I didn't start the audiobook until over 50% of the way in so yeah I, I didn't I didn't listen to the pronunciation of that name and I feel bad about it um, and then my bookly app because I switched over to the audiobook I am reading a little bit slower than like what I was reading like eyesight wise um, because Bookly will actually show you how many pages an hour you're actually able to read based on your reading sessions and I was reading about 82.9 pages an hour for like all my other sessions um, but with the audio I'm reading 76.4 which is not a huge difference a little bit but not huge um, so I'm okay with that and according to my Bookly app I do have one hour and 56 minutes left. And then according to script, it says I have four hours left of the audiobook, and then I speed it up to two times. So it should be just about two hours left. So I actually feel like I might be listening to more of the audiobook later tonight, after dinner, after Presley goes to sleep, that kind of thing. Because I'm definitely enjoying a lot of things. Like I said, I do have some issues and I just talked about them. So besides that, I really do love like the atmosphere, the writing style is pretty good. I like our characters well enough. They just don't quite feel young enough. And the romance is not quite there yet. Like I actually probably would have appreciated this book a lot without the romance in it but you know it's a YA book I feel like they put in a lot of romance and I'm not a big like no romance person I love romance but it just feels a little bit off so yeah Leon went to go pick up Greek for dinner since we ordered takeout it's Friday night we usually order um pick up to come home because we're not gonna go into restaurants and eat obviously um but yeah Greek food I'm very very excited Hey guys, happy Saturday. So I just sat down to film a really quick book haul video. I only had five things to talk about, which is great. Um, but I figured maybe since we're sitting down here with Presley walking around behind us trying to mess with the camera, I should give you guys an update. So I was able to listen to like another half hour of Down Comes the Night last night in bed I'm only missing like one hour now I don't remember I think I'm like 76% of the way through I don't fully remember the actual percentage but according to both my bookly app and the scribd app this is what happens when I film videos I cut out most of this stuff you guys don't even know he just goes back and forth back and forth back and forth um I only have an hour left it is currently 10 something, mostly because we were having breakfast. We got up a little bit later today. Um, we were trying to figure out our grocery list because my husband went out to go get groceries so I can film with Presley. Um, so I have not started that yet. 
my goal for today this morning actually I'll probably be doing that soon is to finish down comes the night there's nothing bad about it there's nothing super amazing about it like I feel very middle of the road right now and it's because things are happening review re reveals are happening um, actually reveals aren't even happening reveals happened previously and now our characters are trying to figure out how to reveal it to other people I don't know where our story is going anymore so um I do really really love the atmosphere and the actual like healing medical aspect of it like those things I feel like are really well done like the atmosphere is perfect however there were the things that I talked about previously about character ages and relationships that are still bugging me a little bit but I do only have one hour left in this book and so this is my main main goal then I had two books that came out end of March beginning of April and I really wanted to do this vlog in chronological order however the book that came out at like the end of March is almost 500 pages and uh, both of the books that I read previously to that in this vlog were less than that and I just don't know if I'm gonna be able to finish a 500 page book after I listen to this audiobook and finish it by Sunday whereas the one that came out beginning of April is like less than 300 pages so much more doable why are I getting all of my books out dude put my books back so I will let you guys know if I make a full decision by the time we get there but I'm more leaning towards doing the April book um even though I know I should do the March one and I will do the March one because it's it's getting a little bit later now um but there's actually not much time in between those like publishing time like it, it there wasn't much time in between those two books um but I got a little bit behind and so yeah um yeah I should probably stop rambling to the camera right now I will let you guys know when I finish down comes the night I will also let you know when I have fully decided if we're going with the almost 500 page book or the almost 300 page book that's a big old difference in my in my experience so yeah Okay, so it is just now 12 o'clock and I have finished Down Comes the Night. I think I'm going to end up giving it three stars because like I said, there's nothing horribly wrong with it and there's nothing that I'm like super, super into. I will say the further that we got into the book, the more gruesome some of our medical aspects got um, and I feel like that was something that I just didn't specify earlier um I definitely mentioned the like atmosphere of the book and I do think the whole gothic sort of creepy atmosphere part of it is definitely because of those medical things and it definitely definitely gets into really more creepy stuff near the end like oh it was like mm. uh, that I did like the romance now this book had way more romance than i thought it was going to that's not necessarily a bad thing and i do think the author was hitting some good romantic points especially again as we got further into the book further toward the end like the way that she was having her characters speak should have been really really good however because of how i was already feeling about the romance previously that it went a little bit too quick that they were basically only really getting together because of the whole like healer sick person sort of thing like I did not like that dynamic and I don't feel like there was more substance to the relationship because of how I was already feeling with that I didn't like the romance stuff near the end even though like if I'm trying to look at it objectively like not how I had already felt about the book it was definitely hitting good romantic like points it was hitting things that should have been hitting for romance however I did not feel it because of my experience with the beginning of the book and the middle of the book um, so again there's probably a lot of things that people would like about this story um, but for me I think I'm going more for three stars it just sort of middle of the road um, because of those like good and bad points for me personally hi what are you doing? Are you mad that I turned off Blue's Clues? We discovered Blue's Clues today um, because I'm trying out Paramount Plus because I saw on Twitter that some people were saying like if you're a 90s or early 2000s kid there's a lot of good shows on Paramount Plus right now that are like 
things that we grew up with and I was very curious about that. I have not watched anything for me yet, but I put on an episode of Blue's Clues earlier this morning because I wanted to see if Presley would like the fact that there's a dog in it. You know, I mean, it's a cartoon dog, but like he was really, really enjoying it, giggling a ton anytime Blue is on the screen. So I let him watch a couple episodes while I finished reading. Um, and now he's mad that I'm talking to you guys instead of letting him watch Blue's Clues. I think we found a new favorite show for him. Um, so yeah, that's why he's whining. We're gonna have lunch. Uh, Leon should be bringing home some sort of Korean food from the Korean market that we will have for lunch. And then, I still need to pick which book. I am definitely leaning more toward the like under 300 page book, but the next time I see you, I will for sure let you know what it's going to be. Good morning and happy Sunday. We are still doing breakfast stuff in the kitchen which is why there is noise in the background. I am actually doing like banana bread muffin things in the oven as well. Um, but I did want to let you know that I picked a book last night and started reading it because I did not update you guys like at all. Um, but I did go with the 288 page book just because I did not think I was going to finish a book that was close to 500 pages. Uh, and this book is Victories Greater Than Death by Charlie Jane Anders. This is a YA sci-fi basically about a girl who is the clone of a like alien captain. So I think she is like alien, but she had her mother's DNA sort of spliced in so that she looked like her mother as well. And she's been waiting for a while to get taken back to the alien fleet, I guess it is, um, because there's also people trying to kill her. Um, I don't know much more than that, even though I have been reading it. I read about up to, I think, 11% last night before dinner and then I finished up to 31% last night in bed. I was really hoping to get at least 50% of the way done yesterday but I just got way too tired and could not do that. Um, it's not a hard read at all so I don't think it's necessarily going to take too long. My bookly app is saying about three hours which is doable. I don't I, I'm not loving the book. I don't know what it is lately about like the books that I'm trying to read this week, but a lot of them have been just a little bit disappointing. And this one is basically on the opposite end of like a lot of the things that I don't like. A lot of books that I find a little bit too slow and everything like that have a lot of info dumping. And this one is like the complete opposite. It's an easy, quick like read. However, we just get thrown into this girl's life. Her name is Tina and we are just thrown in to her and her best friend and her mom and they have like inside jokes and they go to like a protest of some guy from their town. And there's just so many things that they just, expect you to know or I guess they don't expect us to know but Tina knows and we have no explanation for them whatsoever like it's the opposite of info dumping we are just getting thrown into a world and a life and we have no explanation for them as well like I'm hoping that we'll get some explanation as we go further but so far I just got like so overwhelmed with the information they were giving us especially like on earth we have since moved into like the spacey aspects and again a lot of it is seemingly just like thrown at us without actually any explanation um they are sh sort of playing it off as like she's the clone of this person she has some of her memories she remembers some of like the knowledge that she has learned in the past life but because of that She's just telling us about things. She's like, oh, it's this person from this place, from this thing, and this is how they do this, and... But, like, we don't necessarily need to know that. I just, it just feels a little bit awkward. One thing that I will say is we have a lot of LGBTQ representation in this book that I really do enjoy. We have aliens and people with they, them pronouns. We have a lot of stuff going on. I do believe this is supposed to have a sapphic romance in it as well. So, like, that kind of aspect... I'm really enjoying one thing that is not a spoiler, but I do really, really enjoy how they're doing it. It's in this alien fleet, in this society. I think it's mostly because there are so many different species of aliens. One of the things is like when you greet somebody, you say, hi, my name is such and such, and I use she, her pronouns. And every alien so far has done that in this like aspect. And so that I do think is a really cool like, way that they've developed to do that. 
Um, but yeah, I haven't gotten too much farther in here. We're getting to the more action-y bits. And like I said, the actual like reading of it, the writing style is very quick to get into. But I am still feeling that disconnect because we're getting thrown into something where our character knows exactly what's going on. But we don't, and we're not getting enough explanation for it. So I am feeling a disconnect that way, which means I'm not as excited to jump back in even though I do have some things that I do like as well. Like I said, it's not going to be a huge long read so hopefully I will get back in there and like power through but yeah. <laughs> okay guys, it is almost 7 o'clock and I read up past 50% in victories greater than death and I think I'm calling it. One, I'm super tired right now for whatever reason, and two, I need to edit this video. The thing is though, if this book was better, I'm sure I would be dying to keep reading and I would figure out how to do it. It's not getting better, it's getting worse. I was talking to my husband actually yesterday and today, I've been ranting about quite a few books this week. I don't know what it was about these arcs, if it's them, if it's me, what's going on, but this whole week nothing has been amazing. The best one has been Down Comes the Night, but I was just ranting to him about victory is greater than death and I think I'm DNFing it. I want to say it's not as bad or it's not worse than What Big Teeth, but Victory is Greater Than Death is supposed to be like 288 pages and I'm reading it at the same pace I would read everything else but according to my Bookly app I'm only reading it like 60 something pages an hour when I can usually do at least 75 pages an hour. Normally more than that but this is just taking forever so I don't know if it was one of those cases of like the book where it's printing at 288 pages is just has like small ass font or what's going on, but I am not enjoying my time reading. The biggest things are the things that I talked about before with not feeling connected to the characters. Also just feeling like everything is not not info dumping because we're not getting the backstory for stuff. We are getting dumped on with information, but we're not getting any backstory. Partially because of jumping into a story where the characters and friendships and stuff are already established, but also because our main character is a clone of this alien person who has some of their knowledge and so as we're going through the book we're literally just getting like her saying, oh this is an alien from this planet and this is what this means. Like, oh the ear flick means that they like you or this type of body does this. Like it's nothing pertains to the story. I don't need to know that. I don't need to know about every single crew member that you have, especially if they're not like doing stuff that it matters. Also, this book does have a sapphic romance, or at least we were getting there. However, there has been no buildup whatsoever. Like we got to the point where like one of them was like, oh, you know, I care about you, right? And I was like, no, you never explained any of this to them or me. I just feel thrown into it. There's also been some parts where they do like greetings on the ship and there's like five or six or seven different ones that are very, very similar. And it's getting to the point where all these things are bugging me so much that I was telling my husband, I love sci-fi and this is supposed to be a YA sci-fi and I just feel like it's a parody of a sci-fi. This author is trying to throw too many things in at once. I'm supposed to love the characters and I don't. I'm supposed to love the sci-fi setting and I don't. I'm supposed to love that there's so many aliens and I don't. I usually love the fact that we have LGBTQ characters just in the book but I don't because it just feels so stiff in this book with every single person coming up and introducing themselves and their pronouns which is a good thing but like again when you're doing it with every single character, alien character, that we don't need to see in the scenes like it just feels too much. I do appreciate having those kind of things in the book and I do think the human characters are done a little bit better but it just feels thrown in. It feels like an afterthought and I'm just I can't do this anymore. It's aggravating me to no end. 
that something that I should love because I love sci-fi so much is just not doing it for me. It literally feels like a parody and I hate that I feel that way but I cannot continue with this book not even after this vlog is done because I'm going to be ending it soon so I can edit for tomorrow's video. I just can't do it. I really really can't do it and I feel horrible about it but that's what it is. Now I do want to update my NetGalley reviews before I end this vlog. I have written one review so far. I have not written the one for Down Comes the Night or Victory is Greater Than Death yet but I'm gonna do those while I'm waiting for things to upload on the computer that kind of thing and then we will see what my final percentage is. Okay so I have not gotten much editing done yet but I did finish my reviews. One of them is a little bit more ranty than I would usually like, but those are my feelings in the moment for DNFing. And I did want to show you what my percentage is at now. So as you guys will remember, I did mention at the very beginning of this vlog that I was at 71%. However, then I got approved for a manga, which I do want to read before this month is over. Um, and so I was at 70% when I was able to actually show you my account. And now my feedback ratio is at 74%. So we did go up a whole basically 4% for reading three books. Now obviously the more books that you get approved for on places like NetGalley, the smaller amount like percentage wise each book will count for, but overall I'm very happy that I'm catching up slowly but surely on some arcs. Like I said before, I'm usually really good about keeping up with arcs, but because of the end of the holidays last year I slacked a little bit. One of my goals for this year is to stop requesting anything that like happens after November. So trying to avoid the end of November, December, January arcs. That way I can start next year fresh and new and know that I'm going to be doing the things the right way. But I do appreciate the chance to be able to do these arcs because they are books that I really wanted to read even though almost every single one let me down this week. I'm very sad about that. But overall, I love being able to read them and show you guys them. And like I said, Victories Greater Than Death actually didn't come out until this month anyway. So I wasn't too far behind on that. I definitely want to read some more before the end of this month, if at all possible, so I can catch up and then be perfectly ready to go for next month. Um, but yeah, 74%. I'm not mad at that. And I will see you guys in my next video.